Amy Renee Mahaljevic's story begins in the peaceful suburban setting of Bay Village, Ohio, a stark contrast to her birthplace in Little Rock, Arkansas. Born on December 11, 1978, Amy grew up in a nurturing family with her parents Margaret and Mark and her older brother Jason. This first segment delves into Amy's early life, painting a portrait of a bright, outgoing child deeply connected to her family and her community. Amy's life in Bay Village was quintessentially small-town American. The Mihaljeviks' move over 860 miles from Arkansas to Ohio brought them to a community where safety was a given and children's laughter filled the streets. Amy, a 10-year-old with a vibrant personality, was known for her independence, bravery, and friendly demeanor. Her love for nature and animals, especially horses, was a defining aspect of her character. Academically gifted, she was part of her school's advanced program, reflecting her intelligence and curiosity. The routine of the Mihaljevich children was typical of many families in the area. Amy and Jason would return from school to an empty home as their parents were still at work. This independence was a testament to the safety and trust within the Bay Village community, where children were free to play outside until dusk. Summer 1989 brought a whimsical venture for Amy and her best friend Kristen. They playfully started a babysitter's club, distributing flyers with their names and contact information. Although just a fun activity for fifth graders, this innocent act unknowingly sowed the seeds of a future tragedy. The daily life of the Mihaljevich children included attending Bay Village Middle School, where Amy, being younger, finished her classes an hour before Jason. Their preference for biking over bus rides highlighted the small-town feel of Bay Village, where every destination was just a short ride away. October 27, 1989, seemed like any other day in the life of young Amy Mihaljevich. The routine of school and the familiar journey back home were constants in her life. However, this day would unfurl a series of events that would forever change the Mihaljevich family and shake the Bay Village community to its core. A police officer's visit to her school that day to discuss stranger danger presented an eerie prelude to the events that followed. Amy, typically returning home straight after school, informed her mother of a plan to stay late for choir auditions. In a chilling twist of fate, this was a fabricated story. There were no choir auditions. Earlier in the week, Amy received a call from a man claiming to be a colleague of her mother's, stating that her mother had received a significant promotion. He sought Amy's help in choosing a celebratory gift, a request that required their meeting. This secret, the man insisted, must be kept from her mother. Consequently, Amy, along with her friends, headed to the Village Square shopping center after school. The proximity to her school led Amy to believe she could assist the man and return home before her parents' arrival. Unbeknownst to her, this decision would lead to an irreversible turn of events. Margaret Mihaljevich, in recounting the story later, expressed her diligent efforts in teaching her children about the dangers of strangers. Yet, in her desire to please her mother, Amy overlooked these teachings, setting a tragic sequence into motion. After her friends departed, Amy awaited the stranger's arrival near a light pole. Between 2.15 p.m. and 3.20 p.m., she was approached by the man from the phone call. Witnesses later recalled seeing them engage in a brief conversation before walking away together, leading Amy to his vehicle. This moment marked the last sighting of Amy Mihaljevich. When Jason returned home at 3.10 p.m. and found Amy missing, he immediately informed their mother. Margaret's initial lack of concern, believing Amy was at school for choir auditions, quickly transformed into panic upon learning of Amy's actual whereabouts. Margaret's frantic search included calls to friends, visits to neighbors, a drive around town, and a trip to the school, where she discovered Amy's bike but no sign of her daughter. This alarming discovery led her to contact the police, prompting an immediate and extensive search operation. The disappearance of Amy Mihaljevich sent shockwaves through Bay Village. The community, once a haven of safety and tranquility, was now gripped by fear and uncertainty. The Mihaljevich family's ordeal became a communal concern, with residents uniting in the search for Amy. The local police, joined by over 150 officers, launched a massive search operation. 
The urgency and scale of the response highlighted the close-knit nature of Bay Village, where such a disappearance was both shocking and unheard of. As news of Amy's disappearance spread, the community rallied together. Neighbors, friends, and even strangers joined the search efforts, combing through the town and its surroundings, clinging to hope. Amidst this turmoil, Amy's friends remembered her mentioning the mysterious phone call from a man planning to buy a gift for her mother. This critical piece of information, once relayed to Margaret and then to the police, became a pivotal lead in the investigation. Another breakthrough came when a second friend of Amy's came forward with a similar story about the phone call. This pattern led the police to focus on how Amy was first contacted by her abductor. However, the identity and whereabouts of the man remained a mystery. Witnesses at the shopping center provided descriptions of the man seen with Amy, albeit with variations. The conflicting accounts resulted in two different sketches of the suspect. The described individual was a white male, between 5 8 inches and 5 10 inches tall, with age estimates ranging from 25 to 45 years. Descriptions varied regarding his hair, with some noting balding and others differing on whether he wore glasses. The FBI's Behavioral Analysis Unit contributed by profiling the suspect, suggesting he was likely socially marginalized, lived alone, and frequently changed jobs. The police also sought information about individuals exhibiting sudden behavioral changes, such as increased substance use or unexplained absences, hoping these clues might lead to the perpetrator. As the holidays passed without any sign of Amy, hope began to wane. The police interviewed hundreds and ruled out numerous suspects, but the case remained unsolved. Amy's family grappled with the harrowing reality of potentially never seeing her again. Tragically, their worst fears were confirmed on February 8, 1990, when Amy's body was found in a rural area in Ruggles Township, Ashland County, Ohio. The autopsy revealed the brutal nature of Amy's final moments, with multiple stab wounds to her neck and blunt force trauma to her head. Indications of a possible sexual assault added a further layer of horror to the crime. The killer's removal of several of Amy's personal items suggested a trophy-like behavior, a chilling hallmark of certain violent criminals. Near Amy's body, investigators found a dirty old green curtain and blanket containing her DNA and dog fur matching her family pet. Additionally, Gold and tan fibers consistent with automotive carpeting from General Motors and tape with hair not matching Amy's DNA were discovered. Despite these clues, the lack of a hair follicle on the hair samples hindered DNA analysis through CODIS, leaving the police without a direct lead to a suspect. For years, the case of Amy Mihaljevic's abduction and murder remained unsolved, casting a shadow over Bay Village. However, in 2006, a new piece of information emerged that reignited interest in the case. The police revealed that several other girls around Amy's age had received similar phone calls from an unidentified man, using a ruse about buying a gift for their mothers to lure them. All these girls, including Amy, had visited the Lake Erie Nature and Science Center, which logged children's names and phone numbers. This connection, however, hit a roadblock as the Freedom of Information Act did not apply to private foundations, preventing access to the visitor log. In 2014, the FBI announced a significant reward for information leading to the suspect, later increasing the amount in 2015. The hope was that financial incentive might encourage someone with crucial information to come forward. The case took a dramatic turn in 2019, on the 31st anniversary of finding Amy's body. A woman, choosing to remain anonymous, contacted the police with a potential lead. She implicated her ex-boyfriend, Dean Runkel, as a suspect in Amy's murder. The woman described Runkel's unusual behavior on the night of Amy's abduction and his connections to the area, including a niece in the same grade as Amy. Runkel's absence on the night of the abduction, his knowledge of the case before it hit the news, and his ownership of a gold-colored Oldsmobile, similar to the vehicle linked to the crime scene, raised suspicions. This new lead reinvigorated the investigation, providing a potential breakthrough in a case that had long haunted the community. As the police pursued this and other leads, the hope for justice for Amy and her family remained alive, a testament to the enduring commitment to solving this tragic mystery.
The story of Amy Mihaljevic is more than a tale of a small town's loss. It's a narrative about the resilience of a community, 